welcome back. In the last video, we compared the reactivity of both alkanes and alkenes. And what we discovered was that alkenes were a lot more reactive than alkanes. And we did so by using bromine water and how alkenes and alkanes reacted in bromine water. And what we discovered was that alkenes were much more reactive. And the reason why because it was because of their double bond. So in this video, we're going to cover the next dot point, which says identify the ethylene serves as a monomer from which polymers are made. So before we start, I want to go over those two terms, monomer and polymer, what they actually meant, what, what they actually mean. Um, mono and mer, they both come from the Greek. Mono means one, and mer means unit. Poly also comes from the Greek, it means many. And mer also, again, that means unit. So what you can imagine is a monomer is something that only has one unit. A polymer is if you have lots of monomers attached to each other. So one monomer after a row in a straight chain or in a chain make a polymer. So we have this structure again. If anyone hasn't watched any, any of the other videos, this here was ethylene. Ethylene. And ethylene is a monomer. So the most important part when it comes to the structure of ethylene that you need to know is this double bond here. It's an alkene, and the reason why it's an alkene is because it has a double bond. An alkene is a um, has a hydrocarbon chain, so has these carbons and hydrogens, and also has a double bond. So that's an alkene. So what we have here is actually a way we can make polyethylene. Polyethylene is the actual uh, polymer of ethylene. Now you don't have to memorize this right now or remember it right now, but it will actually come out in one of the next syllabus dot points. You will actually be asked to outline, so you have to describe the way that this happens. So even though you don't need to know it for this dot point, I would encourage you to just to, to listen because it's going to be quite useful when it comes to the next dot point or the one after. Um, so this here we have two, we've got two ethylenes. So each of these here is a each of these here is a ethylene. So got one here and one on top as well. Again, the most important part was that double bond in the middle. It's double bond. The reason why is because there it makes it so there's lots of electrons. So electron density. Density means how many there are in a small area. So a high electron density. And that means that some species, some elements, love attacking those electrons because they love electrons. I happen to have one of those right here, and this is oxygen with a rest group attached. Now, someone might have seen this before. This is the rest group. And the rest group is just a group that um, means there's anything else that's attached, but it's not important what's attached. It's just whatever. It, like it's just a rest group. Um, like that's not what we're focusing on. We're focusing on the oxygen. But the reason why we do have to put it there is because this rest group shares one electron with the oxygen. Um, but yeah, overall, the rest group can also be kind of considered the ignore group. Um, so, but what we want to focus on is oxygen. And oxygens are usually electronegative. And that word electronegative just means they love electrons. Electronegative. So they love electrons. And oxygens love electrons. And the reason why is because they want to have eight. So love electrons. They want to have eight electrons in the outer shell. Every single element wants to have eight electrons in its outer shell. So eight electrons, that's kind of the place where we're all the elements want to be. But if we count how many how many we have at the moment, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. So we're missing one. So it doesn't have eight, it has seven. And if it's seven, it has seven, it's very electronegative because it's so close to having eight, but it's not quite there which means it becomes something called a radical. This is called a oxygen radical. And the reason why we call it a radical is because it actually behaves more or less like a radical. It becomes very, very angry. Um, and it really wants to get that extra electron. So you can imagine being really angry, just wanting to grab that extra electron to make it happy. So what will, ha what will happen is this will might swim around. And if you have ethylene close by, it will sense those electrons. It can see, it can feel those electrons and that dense area in the middle, so this part here. And what it will do is it will actually attack. You can imagine it's going to grab this electron here and bring it to the other side. I'm actually, I'm going to show you, like I'm just going to actually make it happen. So first here we've got this electron being grabbed. So it's gone from here, from that carbon, and 
pulled to the other side because oxygen has pulled it to the other side. And then also what's going to happen, I'm going to do that, is the actual oxygen is going to come a bit closer to, to be able to bind to it properly because it's literally just kind of not grabbed it but made sure it's come close enough to be able to bond to it. So now there's going to be a bond which happens here between the oxygen and the carbon. And each of these bonds you can imagine to be like two electrons. We've got two being shared between the hydrogen and carbon here, two between the oxygen and the carbon, and two between the carbon and it. So oh, here's six here, and there are two being shared between the two neighboring carbons, but the double bond got broken. So the other one is not being shared anymore. This one just belongs to this carbon, one just belongs to this one here. Now the problem is, even though these guys on top are happy because they all have eight electrons, if we look at this this carbon, it's going to have what, two for each of these lines, so two here, two here, sorry that's supposed to be two, two here, but only one here. So two, two, two plus one, that's seven. So it's missing one electron. So it's actually turned into the new radical. The new radical, so what it's going to do, it's going to grab that, it's going to grab that electron from that side, put it to the other side, and it's going to attack the next, so this is the next ethylene molecule, it's going to do the same thing, it's going to actually attack this one. I'm not going to go through that same procedure again, but you can imagine now this one is the radical, this carbon, because it wants to get to eight electrons, it's at seven at the moment, so if it attacks the neighboring ethylene structure, it can grab one electron off it and become happy again. But the problem is then the other one starts becoming a, a radical, right? So it's a chain reaction. So I'll go over this again in, the, in this format. So we have, you can imagine here, this is our um, oxygen radical. That red dot is supposed to mean that it's a radical. What it does, it attacks this carbon, uh, this carbon here, right here, and it grabs an electron off it, or brings it to the other side, which breaks that double bond. So here we had a double bond, but now it's broken. So this double bond is broken right here. Broken bond. It's only one. So we only have one left. We had two here. So this was a double bond. But there it got broken. And um, a new one is formed. So here we have this one is a newly formed one. The only thing that I have forgotten or not added on purpose is because all this happened, this carbon here is not happy. I mentioned earlier it becomes the radical. So you can imagine I'm going to put that red dot over the, in this area, the CH2, because these are the radicals. And now you can imagine me adding just more and more of these ethylenes, which might be close by, and how this is, might be a chain reaction, how they might be one after the other. It's not going to end. It's not going to stop happening. So if this radical wants to become non-radical, what I'll do is we'll grab binds this carbon, making it a non-radical. The problem is then we have the other one becoming radical. And that happens again. So it's another ethylene molecule close by. Same thing will happen. This this carbon will attach the other carbon. And by doing so, making that second carbon a radical and removing the double bond. So you can see how now we have a huge chain. We've made, we can make it longer and longer. And that's what we call, first of all, we would need to word that word um, addition, polymer, addition polymer will come up in the next one. What addition polymer just was is if you have one monomer after other attaching and nothing else is being lost. I'm going to compare addition polymer to condensation polymer in the next video, but this is an addition polymer. But you can see how the ethylene structure how many monomers can make a long chain, and these can sometimes, so this is just, I mean, just I've shown you how three or four attach, but you can imagine we have up to hundreds of thousands attaching this way, and then it becomes a low-density polyethylene or high-density polyethylene. Um, but yeah, so ethylene serves as a monomer, so each of these parts here, each of these parts was a monomer before they got attached, so monomer here, monomer here, monomer here. But now that they're all attached, now that they're all bonded together, they're called 
a polymer. So ethylene serves as a monomer to make a polymer. And the polymer, in this case, it will be called polyethylene. So polyethylene. So I hope that wasn't too confusing, but the reason why I show you a procedure of how it happens is because I want to go through it in a nutshell so that when it comes up again in two, three videos, videos time that you've heard of it before. But the main point of this one, with this actual dot point, is just to know that you can have these monomers, what a monomer is and what a polymer is, and how these monomers can form polymers, like that they can actually make a long chain out of one single type of monomer. Hope that was useful.